welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to focus on the source panel and the program panel inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get started. Now you notice I have the standard layout for editing set up. This is traditionally what I work with. And you'll see the four different panels. We have the source panel, which we're going to focus on in this video today. And then to the right, we also have the project panel. You'll see that's highlighted. We're going to add on that a little bit today, but mainly we're going to focus in the source panel. Now the purpose of the source panel is to work with specific medias uh, individually, as far as individual clips, individual songs, individual photos, where you can display them on a much larger scale, kind of sift through them, you can trim off the fat, and you can kind of pick the specific item you want to import into the timeline, so you're not importing the entire clip in the timeline. Because what happens if you go down here to the timeline, and if you import the entire clip, but you only want seven seconds out of that specific clip, you have a lot of dead weight with the clip. So it's better to be in the source panel, trim off the fat, and just extract only the section of that clip you want to use. Because when you get to the timeline and you start having 30, 40 minutes or an hour long project with dozens if not hundreds of different clips and audio tracks and so on, it gets very cluttered. So it's much easier to kind of pre-do it in here, trim the specific thing you want to save time and save clutter. So let's get started. So let's head down to the project panel. You'll notice I've added three video clips to work with in this tutorial. Uh, the one in the middle, I'm gonna bring up to the source panel. So you can see you can use the scrubber over the top to see what's in the clip. So we're gonna double click it and it's gonna throw it up in the source panel. So now I'm gonna focus on all the little tabs and the features inside the source panel. So you'll notice the, uh, the blue little toggle here. This is the playhead. So you can manipulate to whichever section or frame you want inside that video. So I'm gonna move it all the way here to the left. So I'm gonna start with a set of numbers right here. This is a count, the first set of numbers are the frames. So if it's 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, whatever that is, that's the number it's gonna to count to. And then once it fulfills that, it's gonna to jump to the seconds. And that's the second count. And then it's gonna to jump to the minutes. And after that, it's gonna to jump to the hours. So if you were to drag it across the play, you'll see it count the frames. And this is a 50 frames per second clip. So once it's 50, it hits the seconds. And then it's going to climb and the seconds are going to count. So now it's two seconds. Now it's three seconds. So you notice here we're at three seconds, 14 frames into the video. And then you go to the far end of the clip. You'll notice here there's a number. It says 46 frames and seven seconds. That is the length of the entire clip. So depending on the full length of the clip, this tells you exactly how long the entire clip is. So let's go back over here. And also this little section, you can see here that you could decrease or increase the percentage of the viewing area. So if you want to shrink it and you went down to 50%, hit that. If you want to blow it up to 150, you can go to that. Or if you want to go to 400, you can go to that. Sometimes people like to see closer, you know, if you want to zoom in on something, there's a little handles here that can move it around if it is zoomed in. But I like to just do the fit so you can see the full frame of what it is. Now let's head over here. So there's a little table here that says drag video only and drag audio only. So sometimes if you're working with say B-roll and there's audio attached, but you don't necessarily want that in the timeline, you can drag just the video section alone and bring it over and drop it in here. And then the same token on the flip side, if you want to take just the audio only, you can bring it down here and it's going to come down here in the audio section. And that's only if you want to separate the audio from the video or the video from the audio but we're gonna leave it together because we're gonna import the whole thing. Let's just head over to this little drop down menu which says full. If you click on the arrow down, it gives you different options. It gives you half, fourth, eighth, sixteenth. What this is, is if you wanna change the resolution of the panel, so like now it is half the resolution. So if you're playing with like a very heavy clip, like a 4K clip or maybe some extreme like a 6K clip and maybe your system's um, a little older or it's not, it's not keeping up with all the resolution, you can drop these panels to lower resolution so it'll play smoother and it won't be jittery or skipping frames when you're playing it back. It's not gonna affect or change anything in the final product. It's just when you're scrubbing through and viewing it, it's gonna run smoother. But I'm gonna bring this back up to full. Now I wanna head down to the toolbar, the tool menu right here that's inside the bottom of the, uh, the source panel. And we're gonna go through some of these tools. When we hover over these buttons, it's gonna show you some information. It's gonna tell you what it does. And it's also gonna give you the keyboard shortcut. You're gonna hear this a lot. You should memorize the keyboard shortcuts as much as you can because it really does help with efficiency and speed. Um, but just learn as much as you can when you go. Don't be overwhelmed with it. Um, just kind of do the drag and drop and the clicks and then eventually you're gonna pick them up 
and then your workflow is going to be that much smoother and quicker. So let's hover over this first button, which is the marker button, and you'll notice it'll say add a marker. So that's what it does, and you'll see the M right next to it, and that just means keyboard shortcut. Now the purpose of markers is for you to kind of leave breadcrumbs throughout your video. So if you need a reference back to a certain point or a certain frame, you can do that. So let's just go to this little section here, maybe right before he gets up, and let's add a marker. So we can do it in two ways. We can come down and we can click on the button, which you'll see the little green marker. Now if we move on the playhead, that leaves that there. So down the road, if we need a reference back to where we place that marker, we can just go right to it. Now if you want to do another one, say right here, instead of going and pushing the marker button again, you can just stay where you are and click M on the keyboard for the shortcut. And voila, another green one pops up. So that's the best way to do it. So especially if you're just dragging your playhead along and you want to keep dropping markers, M, 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 and just keep it in the keyboard. You can drop them wherever you like. Now, if you want to remove them or manipulate them, hover over the marker or A marker, right mouse click, and you're going to see a section down here that says you can add markers, go to previous markers, clear certain markers, but I'm going to just clear all markers and they all disappear. Okay, now let's move on to the next two buttons. You're going to see the mark in button, which the shortcut is I, and the next one is the mark out, which is O. So keyboard shortcut I for in, keyboard shortcut O for out. Those are important to do because the faster you can memorize those keyboards, it's going to go much quicker. Now the purpose of creating in and out is because you want to maybe extract just a specific area in the clip. Maybe you don't want to drag the entire thing down here at the timeline. Maybe you only want to just do a specific section. So let's go and let's just get one right before he stands up. Let's do the in. So you can come down here and just click on this if you like, or you can push the I on the keyboard. Now you notice it puts an in marker here. And here it's a different color, so it's saying everything going forward, this is where it starts now. And you can drag the playhead down here wherever you like. Let's maybe get it right before he grabs his leg, because I think his leg's hurt. So right there, we're gonna do an out. So instead of coming and clicking the out, let's practice the keyboard shortcuts. So let's click O for out. And you notice where the playhead was when I clicked out is where it happened. Now you can also grab these handles and change the in and out point, or if you want, you can grab the handle here and make it longer or shorter. So you can adjust the in and out points that way, or you can also move the playhead to maybe where you want the new out point or in point. Let's say let's change the out point from here to here, and instead of grabbing and dragging, let's just leave the playhead here and keyboard shortcut O, and you'll notice that shortens it. So let's say we want to move the inside, we can also move it like that closer, or you can get the playhead and move it exactly wherever you want and then click in and adjust it like that. And then when it's like this, when you have the in and out selected, when you drag the clip into the, the timeline, click that, it'll be only that specific section we chose from the in and out. It's not gonna choose any of this other stuff here on the side, only the in and out. So I'm gonna delete this. Another thing associated with the in and out points is this little button right here. You can see how it says go to in and then on the other side over here, it's the same image except reversed, and you'll see go to out. So let's just say you're over here and you wanna jump to your end point over here, you can just click this button, boom, it goes to I. Same thing if your play ads over here and you wanna just jump to the tail end, you can go here, click to out, and click that and it jumps. So it's just kind of a little quick button to get you to the end point and the out point. Now this clip's short, it's easy to drag wherever you like, but if this clip was say seven minutes long or a nine minute interview, and you've created in and out points, but you're way down the track in the video trying to explore other sections, and you need to just jump back to where you left those in and out markers, you can just click that button. And then another thing I wanna show you is the same way we deleted markers. If you hover over the middle section here, if you right mouse click, you'll see the clear in and out. You can do clear in by itself, clear out, or clear in and out, and then it removes all those. So now you have the entire clip as you did when you imported it. So the next three buttons I wanna focus on we're going to start here in the middle, the play button. As you can imagine, you click play and then stop. So I'll move it over here so you can see a better example. Click play and then click it again to stop. And then you notice you hover over here, it says space at the end. That's the space bar for the shortcut on the keyboard. And just click space bar, start it, stop. This is something you're going to use a lot because that same feature, the space bar to play and stop, works in this panel and this panel. So you'll use it quite a bit. Now the button to the left of the play says step back one frame or the shortcut is the left arrow key. 
but as you notice if you click it it literally moves frame by frame so if you need to get really specific you can just inch your way back to your place you want or inch your way forward click by click and then once again the arrow keys left and right will go back and then the right key will go right so the next two buttons I want to focus on are these two buttons right here we have the insert button which the shortcut you can see is the apostrophe and then we have the override button which you can see the shortcut is the period so they look very similar you can see a little box above with an arrow pointing down this is indicating it's going in between two items and this one is showing that it's going on top of an item so let's focus on this one inserting because there's nothing in the timeline we have the playhead just right here in the middle if we click insert it's going to insert this entire clip right inside easy as that now like I said it always inserts it wherever the playhead is placed so let's say the playhead's placed here we'll click it it'll throw it right where the playhead is now I'm going to delete these the same thing will happen for the override key and this is only if nothing's in the timeline click override it jumps it right in the middle same thing move the playhead override it jumps it right there now I'm going to delete these now where they come in handy is if you have other items in the timeline, which you will eventually, when you're building your movie or your video, you're going to have a bunch of stuff in here. So this is where these buttons come in handy. So I'm going to bring these two items over, and now you'll see, let's shorten this one. We'll bring this over. So now you see these two clips are put together. So let's move the playhead right in the middle. So that's where this, the insert, comes in handy. So you see how it's splitting the two items on the icon? And we have two clips here with the with the playhead in the middle. So if you click insert, you'll notice it splits them and just puts it right in the middle. And it doesn't delete anything as far as these videos. It just splits them up, drops in the middle, and you're done. Now I'm going to redo that. Now on the opposite, if we overwrite, it's saying it's going to put on top of the item. It's not going to split them. So it's going to go start from here at the playhead, and it's going to overwrite whatever is there, depending on the length of the clip. So I'm going to click it now, I'm going to click overwrite, and you'll see it just covered up most of the clip. And then it just left the balance of what's left. So if the clip that you're importing from the top is longer than the one underneath, it'll completely cover it all the way. But remember, wherever the playhead is placed on the timeline, that's exactly where it's going to go. So whether it's here, inserting is going to split it, or we're going to do the override, which is here, and it's just going to cover up on top. And like I said, always remember wherever the playhead is is where it's going to drop it. And then if you notice at the other side of the tool, there's a little plus plus sign at the end of the toolbar. If you click that, this is where you can customize the toolbar, which is this area here. So you can add stuff, take things, you can reset it to the factory. Um, but to be, and like I said, just hover the mouse over each item and it's going to tell you what it is and you'll get an idea of what it does. Um, but I kind of feel like the standard layout is good. So I'm going to cancel. So that is the source panel. Now, if you want to jump over to the program panel, you notice a lot of the same toolbars, the same, the same resolution change. You can see the time. You can see everything's the same. So you pretty much all the things we went over here in the source panel, you can apply here to the program panel. Now, the only difference with the program panel is what it's showing is what's in the timeline. So when you click play here, you're playing in the timeline. So this source menu is playing stuff you brought from the source panel to the bottom over here. That usually plays up here. And then everything that plays in the program panel is from the timeline. So when you have 100 clips down here and you have your movie all set to go, you can view it up here the same way. As we went over in the same tools here in the source panel to the left, you can apply those same principles here to the right in the program panel. As far as going back, creating endpoints, outpoints, markers, all of the above, taking pictures. So you can just mimic all the different things we've learned from the source panel, apply it to the program panel. The only difference, like I said, is just it's viewing all the stuff here in the timeline. Well, that's been a basic overview of the source panel, which is here to the top left. And you can, like I said, you can apply all the same things to the program panel to the right. And hope you're able to start making your movies or videos, whatever they're for, and you feel more comfortable and you can feel creative and you have the tools to get started. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I appreciate all the support to the channel. And like I've said before, if you could always give it a thumbs up on the video if you learned something, and or just to be supportive, and also subscribe to my channel if you can. And I just want to say thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.